Good evening, everyone. As Miss Harriet said, it has been like two years in the making. And God has been good. God has uh, a perfect time. And uh, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm still trying to wake up. <laughs> I came from, uh, from LA, and, uh, and the place where I'm staying is quite a distance away from the airport, and my flight was 6 a.m. And we arrived, we, uh, we had a, a spiritual retreat together with a choir in Santa Barbara, and it was traffic, and we arrived at the house like quite late. So uh, we went to bed quite late and woke up quite early. <laughs> so right now, I was, uh, I was still trying to figure out what time is it. <laughs> That's why when I was heading towards the, the cafeteria, I was, I was heading towards here. It's a good thing I had some savior <laughs> who, uh, who met me along the way and said, are you heading to the cafeteria? I said, yes, I am. <laughs> it's that direction. <laughs> So God is good, friends. God is good. And as Miss Harriet said this, uh, this evening, we're here to have an experience with God, to develop an experience. And I tell you, I could not teach you skills. This week would just be a reminder of what we have to do. Amen? It's, it's just a, a time of refocusing to the God that we serve, to the powerful, wonderful, merciful, and beautiful God that we serve. And... Uh, and when Miss Harriet asked me, how should, I, how should she introduce me? And I said, just a missionary, because this, this week you'll get to know me through the things that the Lord has done in my life. So this, this week is not uh, a story about me, but a story about how powerful God is in my life. If He could use me, He could use all of us. Amen? And I tell people, if God will use a donkey, he would be more effective than me. Just imagine if donkey would speak. All of you would listen. <laughs> All of you would listen, seriously. And, and God condescended to use us. And I'm thinking, why would the Lord use us? He could have used angels to do this. But the Lord wants to share his joy with us. Amen? Because this task is a very joyful task. I would not do it for the for the past eight years and 11 months. Yes, I have been a missionary for the past eight years and 11 months. I'll be turning nine next month. <laughs> God has been good, God has been good. And for the, for the past eight years and 11 months, God has been so faithful. Uh, I have not received a single salary, no stipend, only depending on the Lord for everything. And when you depend on God for everything, you have everything. Amen. Amen? With that being said, I'd like to request you once again to, to kneel down for a word of prayer. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks because you deserve all the praises and all the thanksgiving that we can give. And Lord, I pray that as we talk about you, as I talk about you, Lord, you, may you hide me behind the shadow of your cross that I may not be seen or be heard. And even the desire to be seen or to be heard, please take that away. That Jesus and Jesus alone be seen, be heard, be lifted up and exalted. Hey, Father, I pray that may each and every thought, heart and mind be focused only upon Jesus. And thank you so much, Lord, because we know that you have heard and you have answered this prayer. So Lord, please anoint us with the anointing of your Holy Spirit. For we ask this in the loving name of your son, Jesus, all your children say. Amen. This is one thing I learned about prayer ministry. That the more, the more I come and, uh, and be part of this ministry, the more I realize that I, I don't know anything. But God knows everything, amen? And one of my favorite verses that reminds me for... Uh, for such a long time that it has been a constant reminder for me. It's found in John 15, verse 5. If you have your Bibles, would you please open it? John 15, verse 5. If you're there, say amen. If you're not there, say wait for me. Okay, we'll wait. John 15, verse 5. Amen. 
So I will read from King James Version. It says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. And this is my favorite line here. For without me, ye can do what? For without me, ye can do nothing. Friends, at the age of, at the age of six, I was already a businessman back home. I was already selling stuff. I don't know if you know about uh, uh, local Filipino ice cream. We call that ice candy. <laughs> we, it's not healthy, don't do it. <laughs> Fruits and sugar and water, and then we put it in a plastic, a small plastic, and then we sell it, freeze it, and then we sell it. Even though I don't know how to count money yet, I started selling. And I was really thinking that I want to be successful in life. I want to be a businessman. So in college, I took up business. Yes, I did not graduate a the theology. So I took up business and I'm thinking I want to earn as much money as I can. And then one of my uh, favorite things to do when I, when I watch movies before, when I watch TV, that was before, and I'll tell you more about that. I, I love to see that, uh, the travel magazine, seeing people go from one place to another, and I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's quite awesome, but that's quite expensive. How can I afford to do that? Because if you live in a third world, you earn only a little. But then I said, I want to do that. So friends, I was, I was trying to earn a lot for myself and did not really left the Philippines until I was, I think, I was 31 years old. Yes, friends, I'm, I'm past 30 already. <laughs> and then the Lord had me taste a travel abroad on a promo ticket. For the past 30 years that I've been working, the only ticket that I could afford is a promo ticket, a $12 promo ticket. And you know where? Going to Malaysia, that's two hours away from the Philippines. That's out of the country experience for me. And when I look back right now, I'm thinking this is what man can do. This is what I can do of all the 30 plus years. And I'm thinking when I look back, because I desire to have my own studio. By the way, I was a photographer. I was a wedding photographer. Yes, I'm always the photographer and never the groom. <laughs> Yes, friends, I'm single, but not advertising. <laughs> so, so I was, I had a studio of my own. I had a studio of my own, and I was somehow getting a taste of, of the success that I want to have. But friends, there's no fulfillment. There's no joy in it. It's just like work, work, and work. It's just like a cycle of, of stress. <laughs> And look at me, I'm not the kind of guy who could handle stress. I shrink even more. <laughs> Seriously. I, I got, at one point, my weight was just like 42 kilos. Now I'm 43 now. <laughs> but God has, been, God has been so good. The Lord somehow let me taste the life that I want to live. And I did not like it. So the Lord gave me, that, gave me that desire to want something more than what I'm enjoying during the time. And then I heard this, this pastor talk about, about one missionary, and he talked about George Mueller. Who among you here knows the name George Mueller? Oh, praise God, there's a lot of hands. George Mueller, of course, for those of you who do not know, George Mueller lived in a time where almost nobody believed that there is a God who hears and answers prayer. So... He dedicated his life to prove to people that there is a God who hears and answers prayer. And every time he needed something, he will bend his knees and give his burden to the Lord. And when the answer comes, it's a proof that there is a God who hears and answers prayer. Amen? And then, and, and be, by the way, friends, it's funny right now that I'm in the prayer ministry because before, I'm not really a fan of prayer. And when people ask me, hey, Jam, let's have some prayer session. I'm busy and I'll run away. For me, it, prayer was a waste of time. 
that was, that was my thought before. And I'm thinking, I'd rather work, I'd rather sweat, I'd rather bleed than to be somewhere and not do anything. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was so wrong. So, so I was listening to this story of George Mueller. And then, so to make the long story short, when George Mueller died, when he passed away, they had a tally of every answer to his prayer because he journals everything. And, and they had a grand total of 7,250,000 US dollars. Yes, that's the first word that came out of my mouth. I said, wow. Can we say it all together? Wow. wow. But when I heard, but when I heard the date when it happened, friends, it happened in the 1800s. Yeah, a bigger wow. <laughs> and when I was sharing this in, in Battle Creek, a friend of mine who was in the audience has this, has this app in his phone that somehow converts the money on that, in that time to this, to this year. It's more than $200 million. And then it hit me. This is what happens when you take God seriously. And this is what happens when you take God seriously. And when I look back in my life, and I saw 30 years, $12 promo ticket. <laughs> That's what man can do. And then I realized, no, I have to take God seriously. So I, I said to the Lord, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? I said, I live the life that I want to live, and I really don't like it. So what do you want me to do? And the Lord somehow called me to be a missionary. It's funny because before, I was thinking that nine, oh, 11 years before the Lord finally somehow revealed to me that I'll be a missionary, I was listening to the beautiful sermon and the, the pastor said, you should be a missionary or you're nothing. And then friends, I was thinking, I don't want to be nothing. <laughs> I'm a prideful little guy. So I'm thinking, I don't want to be nothing. I want to be a missionary. I told my friends, my two friends, there are three of us, we call, it, we call the three of us the tripod. <laughs> whenever whenever we, have, we have like religious activities, as long as there's the three of us, everything is cool. So we, we, we told each other, just imagine if the three of us would be missionaries, would be the three, th triple threat. <laughs> <laughs> so w there's so much pride. And I'm thinking, wow, the Lord would be so blessed to have me on his team. <laughs> I, want, I resigned from my job. During the time I did not have a studio yet, I resigned from my job. Even my mom did not want me to go. I think my mom, my mom sensed that I was not ready. But I said, no, I'm quite a strong-willed child. So I did not listen to her. I resigned. And then I went forward, but the Lord, this is, I'm making things so, so quick right now. And the Lord said, no. And the Lord said, no. And I'm thinking, why? You don't want me on your team. <laughs> and friends, the Lord has to wait 11 years. The Lord has to wait 11 years for me to be ready. You know, when I became ready, at that time when I thought my, that my ministry was over, at that time when I thought that I, I'm useless, that the ministry is done, and then the Lord somehow finally called my name. Now, you're ready. It's like Moses, remember? When he was called, said, no, no, Lord, I can't, I can't speak well. And that was like me. And I'm thinking, now? You're calling me now? The time that I think that I can do anything for God. And the Lord said, now you're ready. Isn't God amazing? <laughs> Isn't God awesome? It's not because of what we can do, friends. It's because of what God can do through a humble servant like us. And the Lord has to humble us sometimes. And the, hum the humiliation sometimes is so painful, but it's needed. So let me, let me move on. Just imagine that, friends, for someone who has not, who does not have any, any permanent source of income, George Mueller has acquired $7,250,000. And I think, to, I think to myself, Lord, I want 
to live a life like that. So if you want me to be a missionary, then I want to follow that direction. I'll talk more about that during the weekend. And I said to the Lord, I want to, I want to follow that. If you want me to be a missionary, I'll, I will not receive salary. I will not receive stipend. And friends, God is so good that for the past eight years and 11 months, I'm here. <laughs> and I've traveled the world only by the grace of God. And when people tell me, well, Jem, you are so awesome that you have traveled this, this part of the world. I said, no, it's not me who's awesome. It's God that is awesome. Amen? I am nothing. I have nothing. I receive nothing. <laughs> but God is awesome. I'll give you a picture of what the Lord, what the Lord has done. Like last 2000 and 2016, I was in a very tight schedule. Oh, it's always tight schedule for me. <laughs> 2016, at the end of October, I was in Washington, uh, Washington, D.C., and somebody called me to go to India. So, end of October is already very cold, especially for a Filipino. So, I was, uh, I was really, really cold, and the Lord flew me to Mumbai, India. It's hotter than the Philippines. So, when I arrived in Mumbai, India, I was there for two weeks. After two weeks, the Lord flew me back to the U.S., to New York, <laughs> and then flew me to, to, the, to the mountain of Colorado, to Eden Valley, and then where I saw the first snowfall of the year. So, a week after, the Lord flew me out of mainland, and the Lord flew me to Hawaii, another warm place. And after Hawaii, for two weeks, the Lord flew me back to the mainland, guess where? North Dakota. <laughs> North Dakota, and I have not been to North Dakota. And my host, the pastor's wife, told me, Brother Jem, I just want to warn you, it's zero degrees Fahrenheit here. And friends, we, uh, we don't have Fahrenheit back home. Celsius is how we, we measure temperature. And my coldest was 11 degrees Celsius. <laughs> and now that person says, it's zero degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm, I'm trying to compute things in my head because I know that 32 degrees Fahrenheit is zero degrees Celsius, and now it's zero degrees Fahrenheit. I'm thinking, oh Lord, I'm gonna die. <laughs> when I arrive, it's not zero degrees Fahrenheit. They have a blizzard. It was negative 10. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'll be a frozen Filipino popsicle here. <laughs> and God is so good that He sustained me. It went down to negative 23, to negative 23, and, and I'm still alive. And a week after, the Lord flew me back to Southern California. Thank God, it's sunny. But before that flight, friends, during that flight, I was, I was, quite, uh, I was quite anxious. I was quite anxious because I was on a body pass. For those of you who do not know what a body pass is, body pass is... Uh, it's a ticket that you don't, do not pay for the full price. So if you're trying to ride a plane, you have to wait for everybody to board a plane, even the chance passengers. So when, when they're boarded, then you could, you could get in the plane. Friends, this is December. December 12 was my flight, and I was praying, Lord, please bring me, bring me to California on time for my birthday. I'll be passing through three airports. And my friend who gave me the body pass said, yeah, Jem, I hope that you don't have any, any schedule because riding on a body pass does not guarantee you that you will fly for that day. Yeah, it took us three days to fly out of Hawaii. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, I might be stuck in the airport for my birthday. Friends, God is so good that the Lord brought me to California 11.46 p.m. <laughs> of course, it's already my birthday, it's already sunset. But in the world's day, okay, it's December 12th, when, when, when my friends brought me to their house, uh, we talked, sang happy birthday, and I got to bed around 1.30. And at 5 a.m., the Lord woke me up. You know for a fact when the Lord wakes you up. Huh? Yeah, yeah. When the Lord wakes you up, you know it's not, it's not a noise that wakes you up. It's not a call of nature. It's the Lord. So when I woke up, and just imagine, I slept at 1.30, and the Lord woke me up at 5. That's not enough. And usually, I'd be like grouchy and all, but... 
It's my birthday. And the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords wants to have a one-on-one -on -one time with you. Isn't that awesome? Amen. So I woke up in the, in the middle of that, uh, as I was smiling. And I'm thinking, Lord, what do you want to tell me today? I know this is, this is special. It's my birthday. You, what do you want to, to share with me? And friends, before I open my Bible, of course, th what do we do? We pray. So I was kneeling beside my bed, and then there was this song that came in my head. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Okay, stop there. <laughs> Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings and what? See what, see what God has done. So friends, I started, and I'm thinking, what blessings do you want me to start, Lord? So I started looking at the countries that I have visited during that year. Remember, for the past 30 or 32 years of my life, I only visited one country outside of the Philippines, two hours away from Manila. And this time, the Lord had me visit in just one year. In that year alone, the Lord had me visit four countries. Isn't that amazing? And I stayed in the U.S. for nearly five months. And the next category of my blessings was the number of states that I visited during that, like, barely five months that I was in the US. Friends, I don't count the state if I had a layover or we passed by, I don't count that. I'll count that state if I slept on that state. Friends, we have 22 states that the Lord had me visit. And most of them were flying. I don't drive, friends. I don't know how to drive, seriously. When, when you're from the Philippines, I think more than 60% of us doesn't know how to drive. There's a lot of jeepney, there's a lot of tricycle. And people say, why don't you know how to drive? I said, I was born to be driven. <laughs> I just don't know how to drive. So, so I said, I said to, my, to myself, wow, 22 different states. And most of the time flying. This is all God. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings and what? See what God has done. So friends, I went to the next category. Next category was the number of beds that I sleep on. Some of you might wonder, Jem is quite weird, he's <laughs> counting his beds. It all started in, in 2015 during GC session, GC session in, uh, in San Antonio, Texas. So I was, uh, I was asked to be part of the prayer team. So I was, uh, I was supposed to travel for four months. And on the first two weeks that we were, that we were traveling, that this was, this was including the first week of the GC session, I already slept on like six beds. And on the sixth bed, I'm thinking, wow, isn't that amazing? That on just two weeks, six beds. So you know what I did? I took my cell phone and had a selfie on my bed. And then I posted it on Facebook. I was just convicted to do that. Posted it on Facebook, bed number seven. This is how the Lord has provided his bed. I said, you have to declare God's goodness, amen? Yeah. And, and people began to respond in just like two hours, 300 plus likes. And then there's a lot of, of comments and all. And people somehow even PM me and said, Jem, thank you for this post. This reminds me of how God has been faithful to me. Because sometimes we do forget, don't we? So I was... I was looking at that and thinking, wow, this, this is awesome. And so every bed that I sleep on, I take a picture. I even bought a GoPro so that it's gonna be wide angle. So, and I posted it and, and I called this, this folder my bed blog. <laughs> not a bed bug, a bed blog. But, but right now I could not keep up with my bed so the bed blog is over. So what happened was I counted my beds for that year, friends, I had 67 beds in one year. Friends, how many weeks do we have in a year? 52, I have more beds than weeks in a year. This means to say that I have an average of more than one bed per week. And friends, this is all God. This is all God making those arrangements. Isn't God amazing? And by the way, friends, it's not just the finances that I surrender to the Lord. I surrender. The Lord has been teaching me to surrender to Him step by step. It's like peeling an onion, like layer by layer. 
layer by layer. The Lord wants, wants you to, to surrender every layer. And when it came to, to my schedule, I'm thinking, Lord, I don't know if you could handle my schedule. <laughs> Sometimes we're thinking that God is like us. I never remember my sister who called me one time and said, Jem, if you will be a missionary, take it seriously. I'm thinking, why am I not serious? <laughs> I said, what do you mean take it seriously? And she said, if you want to be a missionary, be somewhere, be somewhere and stay there. Be permanent. And because my schedule is not so sure, where will I go after this and after that? And, and it hit me and I'm thinking, wow, she's, she's right. And she said, what if you'll have a family later on? How are you gonna, gonna feed a family? And I'm thinking, oh Lord, I could not even take care of a cat, how much more of a family? <laughs> and then I begin to worry. So I was thinking, oh Lord, should I accept the offer? Should I apply for this position? All those ideas came to my head and friends, the Lord did not give me peace. And when you do not have peace, it's not God's idea. You have to be still before God, amen? So I, I stayed still before God and I said, Lord, please teach me what to do. I don't know how to, how to do this because at the end of this mission trip, during that particular mission trip, I don't have anywhere else to go. And friends, while I was praying, the Lord somehow convicted me. Jem, who has been taking care of you for the past year? And I said, I'm sorry, Lord, it was you. And I said, okay, I give this to you. I peel this and give this to you. And friends, you know what happened? A few hours later, I receive an email. I receive a phone call. I receive a text message. Email after email, my whole three months were booked. After the third month, I said, Lord, I learned something. I need to surrender this to you, everything. And sometimes we tell God we surrender all, but it's not really all. Huh? Our definition of all is like 80%. <laughs> So I said, okay, Lord, I give this to you. The moment I said that to the Lord, I gave that to the Lord. Friends, he booked, at the end of the third month, he booked me six months in advance. After that six months, I said, Lord, I learned my lesson. I'll not even put my finger in any of your plans. The Lord booked me a year and a quarter in advance. That's why we have to wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nearly two years. This is what God can do in a life that is surrendered to Him. And in this week, we'll get to know more about this God that we serve. Friends, God desires for each one of us to, to tell more about Him, to talk more about Him. Because friends, we have the tendency to brag about our accomplishments when we see people. Friends, it's not really enjoyable to brag about yourself. I've been doing that for quite a while. It brings you nowhere, but it's more exciting to brag about God. Amen. Amen? It's so awesome to brag about God. And this is one thing I realize, that when you brag about God, He'll give you more reasons to brag about Him. <laughs> it never ends. There's even one time I asked the Lord, because we know our minds are programmed that everything has an end. Huh? Is it true? Yeah, our mind is programmed that everything has an end. So I said to the Lord, Lord, until when will you continue to do this? And I was on my knees and I was reading my Bible and there was this still small voice that spoke to my heart, as long as you let me. As long as we let him. And this is the problem. We do not let him. We do not let him because we don't know him. We don't know much of him. We know of him, but we do not know him. I love this beautiful quote here. It says, from Science of the Times, no, oh, Testimony Treasures, volume five, page 729, paragraph one, it says, God cannot glorify his name through his people while they are leaning upon men and making flesh their arm. Their present state of weakness will continue until Christ alone shall be exalted. Can you say amen? Our present state of weakness will continue until who alone is exalted? Christ alone is exalted. Until with John the Baptist, they shall say from a humble and reverent heart, he must increase, 
but I must decrease. This should be the cry of our hearts. None of me, O Lord, all of you. And if this is our desire, my dear friends, the Lord will give us more reasons to give glory to His name. I love this thought as well from Science of the Times, April 7, 1890, paragraph two, it says, the reason that more power does not attend the proclamation of the truth for this time, what does it say? No, not much power comes with proclamation of truth is that there is too much reliance placed upon the ability of men. Too much trust in the talent and tact of the workers and not enough reliance upon the arm of the infinite power. The gospel of truth is not preached in demonstration of the spirit and in the power of God. Self is ready to take credit. If any measure of success attends the work, self is flattered. Self is exalted. And the impression is not made upon the minds that God is in all and all. The moment we take the glory that should be God's, God will not be emphasized in our lives. God will not be lifted up. This is one thing I learned, friends, that glory is not so good for us. We cannot handle glory. God's glory will kill us. Huh? And this is one thing I learned as well. The more we give Him the glory, the more you'll get the joy. Since you can handle the glory, give it to Him. Don't you want the joy? <laughs> Amen? He deserves the glory. He deserves the praise. He deserves all the thanksgiving. And this is one thing that I've learned as well, friends. In the prayer, in the prayer room, who among you here were there in the GYC prayer room? And there are a few people here that I, I met a while ago that were there in the prayer room at GYC. Friends, when I started in this prayer ministry, the most difficult part of the prayer session, you know what? Can you guess what? No, no, stopping. <laughs> okay, stopping, that's, that's, uh, that's true. But among the four sections, there's, there's praise, there's confession, there's supplication, and the last one is thanksgiving. Which one do you think is the most difficult? Confession, thanksgiving, actually it's the praise. It's the praise. People ran out of words to praise God. You know why? because we don't know Him. We don't spend much time with Him. If you're given a task to praise a person that you do not know, <laughs> that's horrible. That's why when we come to the Lord, we lift up, we bring up our prayer requests. We have a lot of prayer requests, but we don't have a lot of praises because we don't know the God that we're supposed to praise. And this is one thing I realize that the more we get to have that close relationship with God, the more we have reasons to praise Him. Because, by the way, thanksgiving is what God has done, and praises is, is for who He is. Amen. Amen? Lastly, I'd like to... No, I'm running out of time. I'll share that tomorrow. Friends, God deserves our praise and our thanksgiving. Amen? And the more we praise Him, friends, the more our confidence in Him will grow. And the more our desire to know more about Him will grow. So at this last part of our, of our night, let's spend just five minutes. Can I, can I ask for an extra five minutes from you? Let's, let's spend five minutes and let's, let's gather here, all together on our knees. Come, join me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all.